Okay, good morning everyone and Hazak Baruch, thank you for joining us on this beautiful Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning and we are here studying together Pirashat Vayhi. Pirashat Vayhi, I hope everybody had a meaningful fast yesterday, Asra Batevet. Um, a day that is the beginning of the end, it marks the beginning of the, the siege of, uh, of Jerusalem, which eventually led to the breaching through the walls and then the destruction of the temple eventually on Tisha B'Av. Um, so a lot to talk about. But I want to just jump forward to Pirashat Vayhi over here. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehakol Niyav Baro. Pirashat Vayhi means to live. Vayhi means the life. In it, of course, Yaakov Avinu dies. Okay, which is very interesting. The two Pirashiyot that have the word life in it, Vayhi and Hayesara, both of them deal with the death of that person. Vayhi Yaakov, Yaakov dies, even though Vayhi means to live. Haye Sarah, the life of Sarah, even though she dies in that perasha. So, of course, in Judaism, because we don't believe that the physical death, the body dying, doesn't mark the death of a person. We know our rabbis teach us, Sadiqim, that the righteous, Afilu b'mitatam keruim haim, even in their death, they're alive. Because really, what's making us alive? Our living is not the fact that we're breathing. Many people are breathing, but they're dead. Living means the soul. The neshama is really what's us. We are our neshama. The neshama keeps going on into the next world. It's even more alive in the next world. Right? In this world, the body uh, kind of has the home court. So the neshama feels like a visitor. In the next world, the neshama is really more alive uh, than in this world. And therefore... It's appropriate to call the Pirasha that he dies life because he's entering even a higher form of life in Olam Haba, in Olam Haemet, the true world where we see God and we see truth of God. Vayhi Yaakov Beret Misraim. So Yaakov, um, the Pirasha tells us that he lives in, his, in Egypt for the remainder of his years for Sheva Esre Shana, for 17 more years and totaled how much? He lived a total of Sheva Shanim Varbaim Umat Shana, 147. So Yaakov Avinu lives till 147. And the Pirasha goes on and tells us all the things that he uh, commands his son Joseph. He blesses Joseph's kids, Ephraim and Menashe. We know the switching of the hands, which we're not going to get into today. We know that he blesses all of his sons on his deathbed. So there's a lot to talk about in our Pirasha. Um, of course, right away Rashi points out that if you look in the parasha, the entire parasha is closed. Okay, that means usually if you look in the Torah, you'll see that certain um, certain times the paragraph will end in the middle of a line and then they go to a new line, etc. Our parasha, it's one long block. That's called Setuma. So he says, Lama perasha zo setumara, she asks, why is our perasha closed? He gives over here an answer, two answers really. Number one, lefi shekvar niftar, uh, shekevan she niftar Yaakov avinu, once he dies, Yaakov, nistemu enehem velebam shal Yisrael, the Jewish people's eyes and hearts were shut because the she'bud, uh, the uh, enslavement began. So number one, you know why the perasha is closed? It's alluding to the fact that our eyes were closed when he died. This moment Yaakov dies, that's when the Goyim started to oppress us. Number two. Number two, as she says, the reason the, uh, the parasha is closed is not because the Jewish people's eyes were closed, but because Yaakov's eyes were closed. What does that mean, his eyes were closed? Bekesh legalot et haketz. Yaakov Avin, who wanted to reveal to his kids on his deathbed when he was going to pass away. He wanted to tell them when Mashiach is going to finally come. This is the date. It's the date that we're all waiting to hear, to find out about. We all want to know when is Mashiach coming. It's what we sing, we think, we dream. We all want to know when is Mashiach coming. And um, Yaakov knew. Yaakov was about to reveal to his children. 2023, uh, January 4th, Be'ezrat Hashem. But he, um, he, he left him. It left him. Nistam. Nistam Emeno. It was closed from him. 
the date was closed, it was hidden, and therefore the perasha to hint to that also is a closed perasha. Okay. Now let's read Rashi over here. Uh, excuse me, that, that was Rashi. Let's read now, of course, Rabbeinu Bahye. Remember, we're doing this year Rabbeinu Bahye, Rabbeinu Bahye, Rabbeinu Asher on the perasha, and he always begins with a pasuk from Mishle. So let's see the pasuk that he wants to teach us today from the book of Proverbs. The pasuk says, Be'orah tzedaka ha'im ve'derech netiva al mavet. Well, let's read it again. Be'orah tzedaka ha'im. What does that mean? The orah of tzedaka, if you go in the road of tzedaka, what's tzedaka? Tzedaka is money. Parnasa, giving tzedaka to someone. Orah is a road, right? Orah. Be'orah tzedaka. If you go in the road of tzedaka, the result is ha'im. Tzedaka leads to life. My friends, it's that simple. You want life? Give tzedaka. Vederech netiva al mavet. And when you go in its way, you won't encounter death. Al mavet. There's no death. Explains over here Rabbeinu Bahye. Seems like a very straightforward pasuk, but he gives it beautiful color. Shlomo Melech, Allah shalom, King Solomon over here, may he rest in peace. Balefarsem bekatuv azeh. He's coming over here to... Tell us in this pasuk, al sheva midat daka, on the praise, on the level, on the magnitude of the uh, attribute of tzedaka. Ki beshomram ekev rav veyamim al yemei hamazik ba tosif. It will add life to the years of the one who gives it. Tzedaka says Shlomo Hamelech, you have to know, is going to add years onto your life. Veinehi teshuat nefesh vehaguf. It's going to save uh, the soul. It saves the body. Wow. He says it even surpasses uh, your zodiac. It, su- it surpasses your mazal. Because he says, after all, it's known. Man's life is nigzar. What does that mean, nigzar? Man's life is finite. It's decided. It's decreed. Depending on the alignment of the stars. A person's born at a certain time. There's a certain mazal that influences him. Yes, if he's born in this time, he's going to be, uh, this is going to be his temperament. If he's born here, it's maybe, maybe going to live this long. All, of course, is done with God's uh, approval. But uh, there is a system in which Hashem created in a, a mazal that if a bo- person is born in certain times, he's going to have this and this uh, mazal, this and this, um, uh, uh, whether it's, again, uh, personality or coloring or uh, genes, etc. Okay. Um, and he says, let me bring you a proof. Uh, Pasuk says in Shemuel, or his day will come. What does it mean his day will come? His day, his day that he's supposed to die will come and he'll die that way. Meaning everyone has a day. Everyone has a time that the the clock is going to run out. And similarly, God says to Moshe, your time to pass has come. So you see, he's saying everyone has a decreed time that they're supposed to leave this world. And obviously, if you're getting closer to that day, that means it was decided that that's the day. This day of, the, of, the, of, the, of your life, this is the final day of your life. And you're getting closer to that day. He says, now, although all this is true and it's in place, and, and the person's living within the realms of the stars and the mazalot, there's something higher than mazal, which is kefi ha'schar ve'ha'onish, depending on reward and punishment. Lehosif ala nigzar, we could add on someone who's decreed. That means although you have a mazal, he's saying you, you could rise above the mazal. Not you're automatically above mazal, but you could, if you so choose, through your deeds, you can rise above your mazal. 
That's what it means. Yisrael me'ala mazal. You could rise above it with your with your uh, choices. As an example, Kemoshe um, Hosif the Chizkiyah. We know there was one of the greatest kings. His name was Chizkiyah. Chizkiyah was a very righteous king. Not only was he righteous, everyone in his day, from the smallest kid to the biggest uh, to the to the oldest man, everyone knew every halacha, the most complicated of laws. He made sure there were yeshivas. He sat everyone down. This is Chizkiyah. He taught Torah more than anyone. Amazing, amazing accomplishment. However, um, unfortunately, Hezkiah, one day, he gets a visit from a Navi, and it wasn't a good visit. Usually, if a Navi comes, it's not good news. Okay? Navi'im didn't usually come for good things. Usually, Navi'im came. It was to warn the people about something bad that's going to happen, and if they don't shape up, usually, if things were good, the Navi left you alone. Right? So, the Navi walks in, and he says to him, Listen, I need you to prepare your will because you're going to die. So what are you talking about? Why am I going to die? He says, you didn't, you didn't follow the Torah. The king's like, what are you talking about? I didn't follow the Torah. I was the most righteous guy. I, you know how much Torah is being learned because of me? So the Navi says back, it's true. But you didn't even, uh, you didn't even uh, do the first mitzvah. What, what, what first mitzvah? You didn't do the first mitzvah. You didn't have children. Peru, Urbu, you didn't do it. So what do you mean you were so... You, you, didn't, you didn't even do number one. How are you going to tell me you're so righteous? He says, well, I'll tell you why I didn't do number one. It was for a reason. I knew. I knew why I didn't do it. I consciously avoided the first mitzvah. Why? Because I saw that one day, my child, that if I have a child, he's going to be the worst king in history who's going to populate Israel with Avodah Zarah, with idolatry. And therefore, I realized, I decided, I felt it was better... If I don't bring children into the world. And he said to him, well, that's not your problem. That's not your business, if he's going to be good or bad. Your business is to have them. And therefore, you're going to die. Prepare your will. Then the king, the king, Chizkiah, he says, well, okay, if that's what you say, then I'll do tshuva and I'll get married. Why don't you give me your daughter and we'll have, we'll have kids together? Maybe between your merits and my merits, we're both holy people. Maybe we could have a good child. The Navi said back, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, like I said a minute ago, you're going to die. I'm the Navi. I see it in the stars. Hashem told me, you're going to die. I don't want to give my daughter to you because she's going to be a widow in a few minutes. The king said back, he said to him, very sharp line, he said, Listen, Mr. Uh, he didn't even call him by his name. He called him by his father's name. Your son of Amots, get out of here. Take your prophecy and get out. Because I don't care if, the, if it was stamped. I don't care if the decree. I don't care what you saw. I have a tradition from my father's father, who's all the way back to David HaMelech, that even if a person has a sword on his neck, he could still pray for Hashem's mercy. Even if a person's in a moment, in a situation that looks so dire, they can pray. And therefore, therefore, I don't care what you saw in the stars, get out of here. And he turns to the wall and he starts praying and praying and praying. And by the way, from here we learn an interesting halakha that when a person prays, they should try to pray in front of a wall. There should be nothing in between you and the wall that you pray, ideally. Okay, that's why a lot of times you see in synagogue people going close to the wall to pray. Okay, so he turns to the wall and he prays and God answers his prayer. And what happened? He was added 15 years of life. Like the Pasuk says in Yeshayahu, Hineni Yosef al Yamecha Tet Vav Shana. I'm going to add unto your years 15 years of life. So you see that a person can, can change their mazal. We also could find that a person could change their mazal, God forbid, for the worse. A person could have a lot of years allotted to them, but they also, God forbid, could lose that. Like we find Yehoram. Yehoram was a king. Yehoram bin Ahaziah. And what happened was, um, 
he had a certain question and he sent the message to find out from uh, Baal Zevuv. It's the name of an idol. He sends to Baal Zevuv to ask that god, um, uh, the god of Ekron, what, uh, what's going to be. So the Navi sends a message to Yehoram. He says, I'm a beli in Elohim by Israel. There's no God in Israel that you have to go ask a God of uh, the Goyim, idolatry. That's, that's like the ultimate, uh, that's the ultimate uh, Avodah Zarah. What a Chilul Hashem. You're a Jewish king. And instead of asking your own God, you go and ask the God of the enemy. Lachen amita asher alit Hashem. Therefore, the bed that you're on, the Navi says to him, Lo tered mimena, you will not get off of kimot hamut, because you will surely die. And therefore, person needs to know, says Rabbi Nubahye, that their person needs to know that whatever years they were allotted, whatever their mazal is in general, they could always change it for better or for worse. Barminan. Ve'alken, and therefore, Amar Shlomo says Shlomo HaMelech, Ki hatzdaka, Mida Elyona ve Atsuma. Koha Gedola u Pirya Hayim. Shlomo Hamel is coming back to Abu Pasuk. Shlomo is telling us that Staka charity is a very important virtue. And it can bring a, ma- a tremendous amount of fruits. Zeu Shema, this is what it says. Beorah Staka Hayim. If you go in the way of Staka, you're going to have life. Kilomar meaning Tosefet Hayim al Not life. You're going to add life. Whatever was decreed, whatever was allotted to a person, Tzedaka could add to that. Like we find by Binyamin Atzadik. Look at this beautiful story that our rabbis in the Midrash bring. Haya memune al kupa shel Tzedaka. Binyamin Atzadik was in charge of the charity. You know, there was a box of Tzedaka that they used to collect from everyone in town. You have it today, right? Bikur Cholim, all these organizations that everyone gives to, and then they give it out to the Aniim. Anyways, he, this this uh, Binyamin Atzadik was in charge of the tzedaka. So one day a lady comes, Ba'alifanav Isha, Bishne A lady comes in years of famine, and she says, Rebbe Parneseni, Rebbe, could I please have some parnasa? Amarla, he says to her, Ha'avuda, he says, I swear, in bekupasha tzedaka klum, I swear there's nothing left in the box for you. I have no tzedaka left. Everyone is tight. No one's giving. And there's very little for me, for even the people that have, don't even have to give. So for sure, for you, there's nothing left. I'm so sorry, I, I don't have tzedakah to give you. Amrado, she said to him, If you don't give me, Rabbi, You need to know that you're going to have a lady with her seven kids die in front of you. She was t- talking about herself. Well, Ahmad, he stood up. He gave her from his own money from his own pocket even though he for sure gave tzedakah and he already gave his ma'asir and whatever he's obligated but he it sounds like over here he stood up and he gave her extra more he gave from him his own pocket le'yamim some days later chala bin yamin atzadik this man bin yamin atzadik he got sick venata lamut he was very ill leaning to death the angels came to God and they said, Master of the universe, you said, You said that if a person saves one life, it's like they saved the whole world. Here, Binyamin, he saved eight people, a lady and her seven kids. Is it fair? If he saved eight worlds, that he should die from in a short amount of years. Tana, it was taught, Hosifu lo kaf bet shana. They added twenty-two years to this man's life. Benjamin Tzadik, unbelievable. So Shlomo Melech of here is very, very not exaggerating. According to Rabbi Bachir, he's very precise. If you give tzaka, or tzaka hayim, the way of tzaka will lead to life. And of course, it goes without saying that if you go in its path, that you won't encounter death uh, in its way. Because opposite, it'll give you more life than was originally decreed. And like the Pasuk says, Pasuk says in Mishle, elsewhere, 
כלומר, היא מגינה עליו שלא ימות קודם זמנו. צדקה, my friends, protects us. צדקה, watches over us. It makes sure that we don't die before our time. מאחר שהצדקה היא מוסיפה על הנגזר, and if it, not only that, but if it adds to our ears, כל שכן, surely, שתגיע ותקרא בימים אל הנגזר, ולא ימצא מוות קודם בזמנו. For sure, it will make sure to at least um, that we don't encounter death before uh, the time that was decreed. So this is all um, amazing Musar. Amazing Musar. Sometimes a person's wondering, what could I do um, if I'm stuck, if I'm in a situation and I need Hashem's help? So what a person can do is um, give tzedakah. Giving tzedakah can help change a person's mazal. Now he goes over here into interesting levels. Ve'hine, inyan ha-tzedakah is she'yiten adam mishelo. What is tzedakah? Tzedakah is giving something that's yours, le'mish etzadik, to someone who needs. It's a very beautiful way that he puts it, by the way. You know, I know it sounds very simple. But, but that's what tzedakah is. Tzedakah is giving something that's yours to someone in need. Not giving someone something that someone else is. Giving yours. Right? Giving what's yours to someone else. Ve'hine hi medregot rabot. There are many levels of tzedakah. And he goes through the levels. He says, number one, yesh tzedakah she'yiten adam pruta le'ani min ha'umot. Number one, you could give to the nations of the world. You give charity. Okay, that's good. That's tzedakah. Gdola mimena, higher, yiten le'ani Israel to give to a Jew. Higher than that, giving to a Jew, to give to a Jew from your city. The Pasuk says in Shemot and Mishpatim, give to the Ani with you, who's with you in your city. Lemala, higher, to give to an Ani who's your relative. Wow. Higher, what's higher than giving to an Ani, your relative, is giving to Aniim who are your own children. Shifarneset Banav. Okay. Higher than your own children. Shemefarnes Avi Veimo. Why is giving to your parents? Your parents, he says over here, is higher, higher form of taka than giving to your own children. Why? Shemekayim, because by giving to your parents, you're doing two mitzvot. You're giving taka and you're also doing kibud avaim. You're respecting your parents, you're honoring your parents. There's no higher level than tzedakah to your own parents. Wow. And therefore, what's the reward for respecting your parents? It all ties back together to what we said. Why is it? Why is it that if you honor your parents, you're giving long life? Because when you give tzedakah, you, you could go above your mazal of life. Whatever life you were given, you're going to get more life. So tzedakah, if tzedakah does that, then for sure tzedakah to your parents, which is kibbutz avaim, could do that. You understand how it all ties together? That's why respecting your parents is long life. Because it's the highest form of tzedakah. And in general, tzedakah gives you long life. Okay. V'chen matzinu Yosef. Now look at this. How does it all tie into our perashah? You're wondering, I know. So look what he says. He says, we find this all by Yosef. He fed his father. He sustained his dad for how many years? How many years when Yaakov and Yosef finally reunited? How many years did they live together for? And they all lived happily ever after, right? Well, for how many years was happily ever after? 17. 17. It's the Pasuk, right? Right, we just read it. We, we started the class with the Pasuk. Vahi yeme Yaakov shene hayav. Uh, sorry, Vahi Yaakov Beret Mitzrayim Sheva Esrei Shana. Yaakov lived in Mitzrayim for 17 years. So Yosef sustained his father for 17 years. That number is very interesting. Why does Pasuk have to even say 17? If you do the math, Rabbi Nubahia says, you'll know it was 17. Because why? He comes down when he's 130 and he dies at 147. So what's 147 minus 130? 17. So why does the Pasuk have to say he was there for 17 years? 
right? So he explains. Because Yaakov took care of Joseph, his son, for 17 years. Because how old was Yosef when he left his father? Yosef left his father when he was 17 years old, right? Like the Pasuk says back in Perashat Vayeshev. Toledot Yaakov, Yosef, Ben Sheva, Esre, Shana. Yosef was 17 when he went on that fateful day to go see how his brothers are doing. So Yosef is 17. So Yaakov took care of Yosef for the first 17 years of his life. Mida, Keneged Mida. Because of that, Yosef took care of his father for the last 17 years of his life. Beautiful. Vahi Yaakov, Be'eret Mitzrayim. Sheva Esre Shana. That's what the Perasha is coming to tell us. So over here, over here we have beautiful Musar starting off the Perasha about the importance of Tzedakah. Of course, Tzedakah is giving something that's yours. But what is yours? Yours could be your money. Yours could be your time. Yours could be your knowledge, your resources. But giving something that's yours to somebody in need. Okay, this is Daka. This is an opportunity, my friends, that we have to give Daka. We all like to receive, but we have to realize that receiving is death. Giving is life. Literally, when you give, you're not only living, but giving will lead to more living. You'll be more alive, you'll get more life. Hashem will reward a person who gives with more life. There's a story told in the yeshiva. Um, I don't know if it was the Hafez Chaim, I forget which yeshiva it was. One of, the, one of the customs they had in this yeshiva was that every day another boy would head the Gmach. They had a Gmach, Gmach stands for Gimlut Chasadim. It was a fund that um, they would give out every time someone needed something, they would need a loan, they would need something. So they had in the yeshiva amongst all the boys, they had this, this little uh, Gmach. Um, this charity fund and um, every day another boy had to be in charge of it he had to take off a day of learning go sit in the office and anyone in the town that needed would come and they would be in charge of uh, uh, you know writing down and uh, tracking etc etc okay so one day it was a certain boy's turn to be in charge of the gmach well he didn't want to be in charge because that meant that he would have to now take off from learning. He said, I don't want to take off from learning. Take off from learning? I, I, I don't want to do it. Let someone else do it. I'm learning. Someone else be in charge of this chesed. They came to the rabbi. They said, Rabbi, what do we do? All the boys are taking turns. It's his turn. He doesn't want to now do it. He's backing out. It's not fair. We all wasted time from learning. He should waste time from learning. So the rabbi, what's he going to tell the boy? He was smart. The rabbi called the boy over. He said, listen, why you don't want to watch the, the kupa, the charity fund? He says, rabbi, I'm going to waste the whole day. I want to learn. My time in this world is limited. I need to finish. I need to learn. So the rabbi said back, I understand. But let me tell you something. You know, there was two rabbis, Abaye and Rava. Both of them come from Eli HaKohen. If you know anything about Eli, unfortunately, Eli had on his family a decree of death, karet, because he did something inappropriate, he didn't rebuke his children. So Eli, anyone who comes from Eli, is going to die by 20. However, the Gemara says we have two big rabbis, Abaye and Rava, and they lived much longer than 20. One lived till 40, one lived till 60. The one that learned Torah lived till 40. The one that lived till 60, why did he live till 60? He learned, but he also did tzedakah. So he got 20 years for his learning and another 20 for his tzedakah. So this is what the Gemara says. So the rabbi turned to the student and he said, listen, if you give tzedakah, if you give of your time, if you help and man right now this charity fund, so it'll give you more years at the end of your life and then you could use those years to make up the learning that you missed by watching the kupat tzedakah. This is what the rabbi said. Very clever. But this is what Shlomo HaMelech is saying. That tzedaka, my friends, adds life. Tzedaka tzedil memavit. Tzedaka 
of course, midah keneged midah, always. Because Yaakov took care of his son for 17, his son ended up taking care of him for 17 years. This is the power. Of course, there's a lot more to talk about. But we'll stop over here for today. Everyone have a wonderful day. God willing, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.